hurt you too. I have grace. Give Crane of Water. I think. No, no, I didn't have. <laughs> Sorry. No. No water for you today. Hello there, this is I am Mark 3, and welcome back to Landinar Into the Void. Sorry if I sound a bit distracted there, but this is me we're talking about. Honestly. Me not being distracted is just a wonder in and of itself, let's be honest at this point. Um, I want... Let's buy both of the chemical engines you've got here. Though we'll also need a fuel tank for those as well. Um, I can afford to get the additional... Wait, what did I just buy? Okay, I did buy an iron engine, engine. Good. For a moment I thought I'd bought something else. Ugh. And I, I would grab some more tank tosses, but I can't afford it, so I'll leave that at least for the moment. While I go and hunt for a fuel tank. But yes, welcome back. So, um, as I said, I sound a bit distracted, but that's because I've literally in the middle of recording because I didn't want to forget. Um, I actually went straight onto the Discord and I typed up ideas and I, I've made this uh, massively long post in the idea box. <laughs> I'm going to put people off with sheer word count. Yes, no one will know the, uh, my brilliance. No one will know my genius. <laughs> no. Um... No, it's actually much more than that, because um, I know for a damn fact I forgot something. I, I want to buy stuff, mm -hmm. darn it. Oh, there we go. I know for a darn fact that I forgot something. But at the same time, I... Uh, I think an extra heatsink would be a good idea as well, but I want a fuel tank. Uh, but I also included two new ones that I thought up at the same time, so, you know. Oh, hi. Um, I'll give you the rundown as we travel. First off, I'm buying a new small fuel, because I need for two small engines. Large fuel, I don't know how big it is, but it got, it's got 22 on it, so that's pretty high. Well, let's, let's buy us um, that there. Also, some more cargo modules, I suppose, would be a good idea. Just some wall-mounted stuff. And that's left us with enough to go back and buy whatever the hell it was yeah. that I was just looking at. The heatsink, yeah. Oh, can I actually buy... Ooh, ooh, I can buy more. I could buy some wall heat sinks, too. <laughs> I've got, walls I've got. I can buy one. Mm. Oh, well. Our ship is getting better. Anyway, let's go ahead and fit this stuff in, and I'll cover what I've done, because basically, I've... I also asked about the, um... Our, what I was wondering before. Are turning thrusters actually, you know, turning thrusters? Because I suspect they're not from how they were performing. But beyond that, let's get, let's get these sort of like extra power. Yes. But beyond that, um, I have actually suggested three things engine wise. Um, one of which was the ram scoops I came up with during the last part. The other two, I honestly don't know. Um, I know there's something else that I've forgotten, but I also came up with side engines and cruise engines as well. Which I'll get onto those in just a little bit as soon as I finish fitting myself out. Like, I've got four power. That's enough for one shield. But I think... Or I could mount um, an iron engine into that space as well. But I think the shield will be more valuable to me in general. So uh, let's fit the extra shield instead. Let's pop it there. And then, of course, we've got the heat sinks and stuff as well. So let's go ahead and mount those. We've got a pair of heat sinks, which I will install. Mm, I want to install them somewhere useful. Actually, actually, a good place would probably be in the room with the, the bulk of the weaponry. Put one in the in the core area as well. But one in here. So if this section, if this room dies, we'll lose that heat sink in terms of its effect. But at least we'll still have the one that's inside here. And we'll also have this wall-mounted one that's um, going to be stuck in there as well. So, yeah. There we go. Plenty. Also, wall cargo storage slots, which, um, they only hold one each, compared to the three of the normal one. They also don't come with a drone, but, hey, you know, stuff. Combat, avionics, I don't have the power to... Oh... Uh, wait, why is... Combat CPU? No, I can't fit the... doll. Oh. Of course, shield counts towards combat. I need a better cockpit. However, that does mean I can fit the extra ion drive. <laughs> so, there we go. Fine. 
no extra shielding for me. I've still got my really thick hull, though. Even though I've got, like, 3,000 credits worth of damage, actually. Oh, dear. Right. Sorry. Let's just say, um, it, when it comes to any game, I have... Well, any game, any suggestion, any idea, any time I talk about something, really. If I'm, into, if I'm into designing something, I think this is something that's not often come up with. It doesn't come up across very often for me in terms of the channel. In fact, I don't think even think it comes up, um, even not even in building games, like... Um, let's track that mission. Family Heritage mission. Isn't that much further out? Go to the rumoured... Where, where's the rumoured place? Unless that's just broken. I can't seem to figure out what, what I'm doing with it. Sorry. But, um... Maybe it's because I'm in a dock at the moment. There we go. Oh yeah, that's acceleration so much better. Then again, maybe it's because I've got the um, side thrusters mounted on the back as well. Maybe that's why it looks to me like they're in, in a kind of inertial thruster. Eh, I'll, I'll figure that out when I get there, I suppose. For now, let's go ahead and pick up our primary quest, Stone Eye Children, because I said we were going to be moving on. So, uh, look, I think we're going back to the ice sector now. Apart from the fact that my mission tracking seems to... Wait, why is it saying that I have to impress Angelica still? Yeah, I don't know. Fine, I'm docking again. I'm sorry, station. I did not expect to be back so soon. Here we go. <laughs> oh, that's an awkward dock. Right. Ugh. Anyway, let's go. Uh, Ram scoop. I mentioned that I f thought of this while watching the headlights on my ship, as I did last time. So I actually mentioned where it came from. And then I kind of roll with it, because if I'm actually outright, you know, designing something, like if I'm investing in it, if I'm going, hmm, you know, I really want to do this thing. I'm going to create the hell out of it. I often have this kind of, like, logical role with it. Like, uh, I'll go into the idea and I'll keep on going. I think I'm... What? That kind of thing, so... Good worth. So, I've done a little bit of thinking on it. Take your total time appreciation. The Roosevelt, thank you. Head out to the Caldera system, meet up with the next person. So, yep. That's the objective I was missing. We just need to head out now. I don't know why I mentioned design, because I've not done much in terms of fluff. I don't know. It's just it's, uh, my ramble went, you know, I do like going into the fluff. Honestly, one of my favourite things about the um, older games is the fact they came with manuals, and they actually came with background information for a lot of things, like... Like, um, in a current game, it's like, here, have this laser rifle. It's very shiny. Go pew pew and shoot stuff. Haha. -ha. Fun times, yes? Um, but an older game might go, hmm, this is the Model 27 um, laser carbine. It was in, uh, it was invented as a main military weapon, like, say, 12 years ago. It's slightly outdated now, but it's, st it's still reliable and packs enough of a punch, you know? Um, so it's like rolling a bit in terms of narrative kind of thing. Let's keep on going here. And yes, the ship does feel a lot faster. Well, it's not faster, we know that for a fact. It's more responsive, though, with more engines on the back. Also, it's symmetrical as well. In terms of... Well, the engines are symmetrical, at least. <laughs> Onwards. Yes. Right. So, um, got me thinking, what about ram scoop module? Take up a forward point on the ship in return. It provides a boost to our engine acceleration, turning, and or maximum drive speed. Or some combination thereof. So that was my suggestion in terms of the ram scoops. So I'm not going to come up with any like ideas and things as we go through the warp. Yep, good time for this. The next one I suggested was uh, side-mounted engines, similar to normal engines. Uh, maybe less thrust, but higher turning power. So that's a way to differentiate them a bit. They can be fitted into a side slot. Requires a clear line behind it. 
though, so extruding gear like um, our nice side-mounted weaponry and stuff can't be put behind a side-mounted engine. Um, like I said, unless it's something like a missile launcher, like you know, something that's embedded in the hull. So it doesn't stick out, so it doesn't get in the way of the engine. So that can go behind a side-mounted engine. So it might be an idea, especially like... Um, so on a ship like this, I could like have a couple of side engines just strapped on like, the back here. I couldn't put them on the backs of this one here because they'd be colliding with the hull back here, so they don't have a clear line behind them. But um, it might be a way to mount extra engines on some of the more restrictive si types of ship. So that was my thought behind that one. Okay, my goal... I'm back in the icy system. I need to go to see Tristan Shiny. If I recall, wasn't the... Um... Yeah, wasn't the... Uh... How many heritage one in this mission as well? Mm, that, 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 that quest seems to have had something happen to it. It's not working properly. Okay. Still night children. Let's go see our contact. Here we go. Boost up to speed. And then that lets me trip to switch to cruise drive straight away and off we go. <coughs> Ow, my throat. <coughs> right. Um, the third one I put into the, the outright suggestions is cruise mode engines. Um, this was inspired actually because uh, I was cruising around a little bit in that last part, just going from here to there. So a cruise mode engine is like a, just a manual one. It's like a slender but long engine. It's like a one x one by three or one by four kind of thing. So it'd be a, it'd be something different. That's something that's um, been me generally mentioned that there isn't much by way of room Tetris in this game. It's either one by one or f two by two for the most part. Ignoring wall-mounted stuff, of course, which can sometimes get in the way, sometimes not. Uh, but like um, a long, like an L-shaped block, and what it does is it has a little bit of thrust, so you get a little bit of acceleration. I need to dock here. Um, so in itself, it's very inefficient as a standard engine. It's that side. Yep, there we go. But what it does is for each cruise engine it adds like a fixed amount to your ship's maximum cruise velocity and I I spitballed like 250 to 300 added to your speed which is like a 16 to 20 percent increase to your cruising speed for every cruise engine you have installed on your ship though of course they might be power or hungry intensive as a trade-off for that as well as their somewhat bulky size so that was the suggestion there. Though I also added that maybe this could also be an alternative version of a standard engine. Like um, you could get a cruise-tuned chemical engine, or a cruise-tuned ion engine, or a cruise-tuned plasma engine. So you'd have they'd be longer than standard types. They wouldn't be as powerful in general, but they would boost cruise speed as their trade-off for the um, for the less over the less no, sorry the less the more underwhelming performance. Anyway, we have arrived in a new place, so I really should stop yapping, at least. Uh, 60, 70, 80, 80, 80. Right. So, where are we? We are in a new station. We are in Wetatech. Isn't that where the water lady was buying her stuff from? Yeah, I seem to recall that, that serve she was. There's the Sarah, by the way. The Sarah could actually have five engines on it. That's pretty good for such a small ship, for a Corvette. Look at that. L look at that lovely, lovely layout. That actually gives you a lot of space to tinker. Unless you want access around the place, because you've got to keep like those five tiles there clear to get into the uh, forward and aft rooms. But yeah, you could have fit, fit a lot in that ship. If I hadn't had the funds to skip up straight up to an Alice, then a Sarah would definitely have been a good one to get in the Corvette class. Pretty nice. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. Where to tech? This, um, since this is the ice system, this is where the water comes from. It looks like. Uh, can't seem to beat the game on my portable. Yeah. Mobile games. Got love them or hate them. They have they got poisoned by so many microtransactions. Go right through. Want something? Pick a num. 
Wait, what? Pick a number. Yeah. Hello, Captain. You interested in buying and selling goods? Yep, show me the goods. I need water, actually. Let me get a request form for you. What's your name and transponder code? Uh, uh, I, I have no idea what's going on. Uh, I'm sorry, I thought you were aware. We're on a work to rule slowdown. Sadly, for the corporate types, this decreases productivity. We can keep our jobs, though, because technically we're not doing anything wrong. Exclamation mark. Smiley face. Stick it to the man. We're doing everything exceptionally right. You should see Administrator Elriot. He's furious. He grins proudly. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Um, this is this kind of thing is always a pain to deal with. Uh, someone who just like follows the rules to the letter. I'll keep doing this until Workers' Union succeeds in giving us more rights or the whole thing collapses. So, can I trade here? Well, you will have to fill in the request form and wait for approval. The maximum throughput time is 12 cycles. And since we're on a work to rule strike, you can bet it'll take the entire duration. That's not work to rule, that's deliberate slowdown, by the by. Work to rule means that um, you can take a ticket, but then that doesn't mean it'll take the maximum throughput time. It means that um, you'd be in the queue and 12 is the maximum, but if they get to it before that, like you're you become first in queue before that, then you get seen to that, depending on work rate. So, so honestly, you can't really trade right now. So, yeah, that is like, um, that's not in the rules. Uh, that is deliberate obstruction of work performance, not just like doing what it says. So, yeah, uh, so, so what do you want to know what I think? Oh, of course, additional points of view are always important. Tell me, what do you think should happen? The quadrant needs West Tech or Union's important better dead than slaves. Uh, I think I'm leaving. I don't know what is going on here, so I'm going to... Yeah, hang on. I need, I need to drink something. <clears throat> okay, that helped a little bit. Right. Still, I think I see why traders have not been bringing water from West Tech. <laughs> yes. The man looks at you with a wary look in his eyes, but forces a smile. Hello, Captain. Welcome to Wetatech Station. You look troubled. Is that obvious? Wetatech employees have formed a union and are working to rule. It's a bloody nightmare. We're at a stalemate in negotiations. Yeah, why are they on strike? More money, more rights, the usual drivel. They need to understand how lucky they are that they have jobs that can pay for their life out here. They can easily support family. It's a lot better than working for Kenrock. Okay, uh, well, so now it becomes a question of, they have jobs that can pay for their life out here, they can easily support a family. So, it sounds like it, they want more, but if they're saying that, if that's true, then are they demanding more even though they've got it, to, they're being fairly compensated already? Kenbock. The mining corporation over in Tusker sector, they gather resources in the Asteroid Belt over there. A whole lot worse than we have it here. So, alright, that doesn't tell me much. Working to rule. Elliot sighs heavily. Malicious compliance. Yeah. That was my... That describes what I was thinking about how that guy was saying they were acting there. Malicious compliance. That is very exact. That's what it is. Basically, they do no more than the minimum required by the rules of their contracts and precisely follow all safety or other regulations. Slows them down, but they're technically not doing anything wrong. If they're following all the safety and other regulations, then that's good. Rules of the contract, though... Well, the thing is, if they're deliberately slacking off, then it's like... Um, well, they get talked to by the management, they'll get disciplined, they may even get sacked, because if they're deliberately going slow, then it becomes a case of they're, they're being... Um, they're not doing their job. They're not doing the job they paid for. End of the day. I mean, I'm a shop assistant. I, uh... I'm bouncing around like a flipping pinball when um, the self-service tills get busy in the middle of the day because it's like, I have to do that just to try and keep up with everyone. But that's also because I'm trying to make sure that I, everyone that goes through my self-service, uh, I've at least said hello to or seen that they've all gone okay for them. I don't always manage it, but I, I do my darn best. 
and I see that as part of my job. That's why I'm the best self-service person they've ever had in that store. <laughs> and that's beating people who've been on it for years, so, you know. <laughs> Sorry, um, I'll stop to my own horn now. Right. So, yeah, um, this this is sounding a, a bit a bit convoluted right now from what I've heard so far. The unit's being led by Berker Celia. A lot of people on the station are already on his side. I have been given permission to hire a consultant to resolve our current situation. I can offer 8,000 space bucks if you help break the stalemate. Can you tell me more? So, yeah, this is why there's not been any water flying around. He's the leader. He's head of asteroid analysis. He took a company ship and is currently orchestrating the strike from somewhere in the asteroid belt, but we don't know where he is. So, he stole a company ship? Okay. Maybe you can find out where he is hiding by asking some of the other workers. I know here and Kia are close. Not Kia, Kira. She's probably involved. Who's Kira? Kira Coles is our system designer and head of technical staff. She's way too smart to be working here. But there is no higher function at WetaTech if you work in tech. Luckily for us, we buy licensed hard, wet, and software. Otherwise, she would definitely be the most scary person in the quadrant. Well, I'm not surprised if, she's in control, if she can take control of the water supply. If she could access all the program in this facility, the Union would have us by the balls. Hmm. Right, who else could be important? Uh, there is um, Armin Monihan the Av and Averix Brogs. Minor players and mostly loyal, but they could be key to swaying the strike. He looks at his terminal and pulls up some files. Um, Armin has put in requests for a pay increase because his daughter is sick. Maybe it's something that you can work with. Um, Averix is an idealist who just loves the cause. Don't expect to get anywhere with him. Is there anything else? Um, okay. Right, so we've got four players. Uh, the, the strike orchestrator has, has basically buggered off in a company ship. Uh, so they don't know where he's gone. So he's... Um, I think he's their lead surveyor or something from what I, that, from that was said there. So in charge of asteroid analysis. So, has he stolen the ship or is he still doing his work? I have no idea. Well, there's a massive asteroid, asteroid just an ice rock just held down there. Um, one person who is weighing in because his daughter's sick, so he's asked for a, a raise. Um, that's fine, but it, it again brings up the question is how well they paid and also how hard is it to get um, medical stuff like that. But it's like a, a parent worried for their child. That can be a very powerful thing. Anyway, we've got another person here. So, person. Kira Cowles, the wannabe most scary person in the sector. Hello, what is it you want? Um, know about the strike? Or can you tell me where Burke's is? I know about the strike. Good, that saves explanation time. So, who do you represent? I bet you came straight from Elriot's office. Yep, guilty. Or do you intend to help the Union succeed? I have... I have not decided. Hmm. I like that in person. Get all the info first. <laughs> Yay! I am. I feel light. To be honest, she pauses and considers you for a second. I don't really care if the union works out, but I do have ambitions. Maybe Westtech is willing to trade me something, or maybe I'll accomplish what I want by furthering the goals of the union. So she's already the, as far as she can go in tech, but she wants more. What is it you want? I want what everyone wants. Money and the freedom to do something with it. Sadly, I don't have a high degree or corporate friends, so that's why I intend to help the Union get a foothold here. So wait, is the Union coming in from somewhere else then? I mean, did... Someone was already here, so... If, help the Union get a foothold? Has the Union come from somewhere else? Is it an outside influence at work? I don't know. How can I help? Oh, sorry, I took another drink there. <laughs> what I need is some aftermarket microprocessors. Every time I order something through company channels, Westtech holds all the encryption keys and back-end entrances. Well, yeah. Uh, depends on what your role is, if you actually need those or not. If I could get some third-party microprocessors, I could get the Westtech systems under my control and really get some influence for the Union. That's why they're scared of you in particular. If you did that... Th the fact that you're even trying to do that is... 
Ugh. It's not exactly good for them now, is it? Uh, I'll be back later. Right. So that's worrying, that one. I mean, that, that opens the route to extortion. Hello, invisible person. Captain? You are Malcolm Braylon, the invisible scientist, with your bright blue sunglasses. What? I'm working here. What do you want? Uh, what are you doing? Hey, working? I make sure the quality of the extracted water is within acceptable parameters. Is that the spinning thing? <laughs> Oops. Can't put similar terms. It looks like... Uh, oh, no, bye. I, I accidentally okay, skipped ahead. Right. What are you doing? Right. The, s the scientist excitedly grasps the lapels of his lab coat as if addressing a meeting and begins talking excessively about the centrifuge and its application to water quality. At some point, he finishes talking and looks at you to a response. Very <laughs> So I accidentally clicked, I don't get it. <coughs> the thing is, I do get it. <laughs> centrifuge is important because it uses the speed to separate a constituent fluids and materials so I'm not an expert on the things but like um, if you put a blood into a centrifuge you can separate the blood cells from the plasma they are suspended in so you know it, it helps to separate things by spinning them out to sort things out in there so if there was serious impurities in the water or something like that then those impurities would get well a centrifuge wouldn't do it by itself like it couldn't catch everything, but it, if there's some like some like grain or dust or some other matter in the water, a centrifuge could help to separate it. So you, you could find that it's there and see what it is and all that jazz. So yeah, informative. Quite so, quite so. Is there anything you wanted? Need any help? Help with my work? Yes, I do need assistance actually. Mission. Microorganisms never get enough of them. Shipments never arrive on time. Oh, or organic compounds. That would probably work equally well. I'll pay you 2000 if you can procure either of these commodities. So, we've got another fetch quest. Oh, wait, there he is. He, he, he's... He's not invisible. He's just learned how to phase through solid objects. Okay. Can I help you? Uh, unfortunately, accepting his quest, that seems to have locked me out of... How like, can I help you? It's locked me out of uh, to asking him about the strike, so that's um, that seems to be a bug there. I can't do that. Anyway, back to you. Uh, um, do you again, do you have any news for me? Did you get me some microprocessors, or maybe you got me a promotion? She laughed shyly, but you can sense that she could be serious. No, he was just checking in. Right, so that's also something I could have declared for her. Like, um, I could have said, yes, I'm going to help you, or no, I'm not going to help you. But I said, no, I'll be back, and now I also seem to be locked out on her as well, like saying either yes or no to helping her with the microprocessors. I think because she, she uh, suggested maybe I've got her a promotion, that means I need to come back here to talk to the chief head honcho. Yeah. Uh, Kira wants a corporate position. Yeah. Administrator Elriot looks puzzled for a moment. Kira? Kira Cows want to go corporate? Yeah, that's like a joyful, relieved laugh. Oh, wow. I never thought to offer her anything like that. Kira is so good at what she does, she seems like a person so adjusted to her position. Sounds like you, Elriot, are slightly disconnected, actually, then. If you're saying that. Always way too smart and dangerous at the place she is working. I think I'll find her a spot in the upper Elkians of the station. So, yeah. She wanted... Tell her she got a promotion if she wants it, but I expect her to throw in her weight for the corporation. Also, before we can install her, we need to make room on the board. I suggest you take um, Arta Gordio for a spacewalk. He winks meaningfully at you. I'll let him know his transport is ready. <laughs> oh. How to look after the welfare of your employees. <laughs> Put them out the airlock. <laughs> you mean push them out the airlock? Are you squeamish? This is space. You either work to earn your keep or you don't have a right to breathe the air. Take my word for it, Arctigoria is not a man who is pulling his weight here. Who is Arctigoria? I've arranged for an accident on Chemrock. I'll know what happened if my paperwork still isn't done tomorrow. 
Or if my lunch is stolen again next shift. <laughs> oh. Oh. You steal my lunch, I kick you out of an airlock. That roach always finds a way to get to it. This one time I sent him for a full works out of Mardo Asset and trails off into a triad about how horrible Archer is. So, he sent him off to a different station and somehow he still got at his lunch. Oh dear. Uh, well, this is sounding more like Frontier Justice or anything like that, but... Mm. Right, let you know how it turns out then. Mm, I don't want to kill anyone. Averix Brogs? No, that's not the one. Uh, goodbye. Speak, civilian. Ah, man, Monty, I've got nothing to say to you right here, so you're just like, oh, God. Uh, Tristan Shane. Uh, oh, this, oh, wait, yeah. I came here following for Tristan Shane, but. Wait, who? Oh, wait, I think I know. Why should I bother with RD levels? Um, right, I do have a message to pass on here, and I'm about to wrap up this episode. Make it quick. There you are again. Do you have news for me? Did you get some of my process? I'm able to motion. Um, oh, I see. I need to deal with the the issue of um, breathing space first. Okay, so he's got... Um, I should probably check my journal on this one. Right, side missions. Drowning nature? No, that's not it. Uh, water quality assurance... Research, frozen assets, talk to Armin. Either promoting the Union or the West Tech Corporation. Found it. Uh, so I've got I've got a route that's working out in this, though I do have to I have to kick someone into space. Um, so my overall goal is to resolve the work to rule strike. Uh, talk to Burke Salaya is somewhere... Maybe you can find him a look, but maybe Kira knows where he is. Unfortunately, I seem, to, I seem to have once again locked myself out of some of the options just by asking for information. What? And I don't like that. Like, I can't go back and ask about these things after giving a certain answer or, like, saying I'm going to think about it. I can't go back and ask again. So, I think I'm... To resolve this, I am locked. Let's hear it. I'm, I'm, I'm more or less locked into kicking someone out of the. Uh... Oh, I'm for repairs. Who are you? Captain. Tristan Shane. Oh wait, no, this is. Uh, not ready right now. No, because I've got to finish the episode. Um. But basically, I've got to take this guy out and. I think it's this guy. Hello? Yeah. Hello, are your transport areas arranged? I'm going to Chemok. We're going to Chemok together, I believe. I can e yeah, I can I can either warn him right now or I can just throw him out the airlock. The thing is I've locked myself out of a bunch of other stuff, so uh, either I warn him or I just kick him out the airlock. Hmm. Ah. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. I scratch your back, you scratch mine. Climb aboard, please. Hop on. Oh, dear. I can't believe I'm doing this. <laughs> um, but, but I wouldn't be doing this if I hadn't accidentally locked myself out of other things. So I'm going to actually bug report this, I think. Because I, I don't like how it locks me out of asking other things. So, yeah. This has been Iron Mark 3. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying the show. And this has been exploring West Tech Station in this part. Next time, we will be resolving the West Tech Strike, I believe. Um, by getting Kira back on board. Because, we're about, because next time, we're going to kick someone out of the airlock. So, yeah. See you all later. Now, if you'll excuse me... I'm going back to the Discord again to put in a bug report about this because that doesn't seem right. <sighs>